Greetings and peace from our Lord God and His Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Welcome to Messiah Lutheran Church this morning. Beautiful day of creation that our Lord has given us. We hope you feel the warmth and love and beauty of our Lord here in this place today. My name is John Sfagera, and Pastor has given me the honor and opportunity to do this service with you this morning. I'm usually the director of our praise band, Revelations, and so it's, again, my honor to be here. Please feel that warmth and love. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, abounding in steadfast love towards us, healing the sick and raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Just and gracious God, we come to you for healing and life. Our sins hurt others and diminish us. We confess them to you. Our lives bear the scars of sin. We bring these also to you. Show us your mercy, O God. Bind up our wounds, forgive us our sins, and free us to love for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Apostle Paul assures us, when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ, nailing the record of our sins to the cross. Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace with each other. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Denny.
us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the O God, judge eternal, you love justice and hate oppression, and you call us to share your zeal for truth. Give us courage to take our stand with all victims of bloodshed and greed, and following your servants and prophets to look to the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Times in the bed. 
you pray for me? <clears throat> In my darkest hour, through what I have feared, you were always faithful and in friendship persevered. A reading this morning from Jeremiah. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed, how long Will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? It is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. The word of the Lord. God stands to charge the divine council assembled, giving judgment in the midst of from the book of Hebrews. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell after they had been in, encircled for seven days. But by faith Rehab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. 
And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephtha, of David and Samuel, and the prophets, who, though, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in the deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, through, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. The Gospel of Luke, at the 12th chapter, beginning at the 49th verse. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were kindled now. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth? No. I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against her mother, Mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Could I have the children come forward?
May my words be in harmony with the entire universe, contribute to its justice, enhance its beauty, and help bring peace to all the earth. Amen. How about now? Yes! Okay, as I was saying, if any of you were like me, those two words were the soundtrack of elementary school. Pay attention. And again, today, our Lord tells us, pay attention. The gospel was obviously in two very, very different parts. The first part was hyperbola. It was an exaggeration. And the second part was a bit of a story. And what this is, is part of what's called the rabbinic method. And this is the way that Jesus was taught in the temple. And consequently, the way he taught his disciples and all of those thousands that listened to him. He used the rabbinic method of teaching. Most of us are more familiar with the Socratic method of teaching. Some of you may remember that, especially from college. Socrates was an ancient Greek philosopher, and he taught by asking a question. And this question was usually of an abstract nature. He used abstract nouns. For example, he'd say, where do we find honor? Where? can we find a moral person? Really open-ended questions. And his followers would answer, and he would ask them another question. And this would go on until they arrived at the truth, until they arrived at the answer. Socratic method. We even find it in the gospel. It's there. It's in John 18, verses 37 and 38, and that's the great interview that our Lord has with Pontius Pilate. Jesus is standing in front of Pilate and he says, my father has sent me to proclaim the truth and those who follow me will know the truth. Well, Pontius Pilate heard this. He got excited because he was trained by Greek teachers. He was exposed to the Socratic method, and he said to Jesus, and I've always loved this line, he said, what is truth? This is what he asked our Lord. What is truth? And do you remember what Jesus said? Nothing. Our Lord stood there because he knew, standing in front of Pontius Pilate, this man who had claimed that he had power over his life and his death, Jesus just stood there because he knew he was the way, the truth, and the life. Socratic method. It's also used in our courtrooms, by the way. If any of you enjoy watching courtroom dramas on television, you see that every time. Questions are asked, answers are given, more questions. It's very adversarial, but it's still the Socratic method. But that's not the way our Lord was taught, nor did he teach. He used the rabbinic method. And the rabbinic method was this. You were presented with something rather heavy. And then it was followed up by something rather light. The heavy, in our reading, is the hyperbola, or exaggeration. 
it's done to grab your attention. If you can't read the fine print, and I hope you can't, it says, now that I have your attention, there will be no pizza served until Friday. But I got your attention. And isn't that what advertising does all the time? BOGO has become a part of our lingo. Buy one, get one. Either for free or for 50% off. BOGO! And it has our attention. And that is what our Lord was doing in the first part of this reading. He says, I've come with fire. I haven't come to bring peace. Really, Jesus? You're the Prince of Peace. I've come to divide. I've come to pit father against son. He's on a roll. Mother against daughter. He even takes it one step further. He gets the in-laws involved. He says, the mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law. He's got their attention. He's got their attention big time. And then he goes to the second part, to the narrative. I don't know how many of you remember this line, but you don't need a weatherman to know which way the wind blows. Bob Dylan told us that back in the 60s. He was talking about the culture of the 60s, that if we were paying attention, we knew that the times they were a-changing. And this is what Jesus does as a weatherman. Jesus starts talking to them about the weather. And as I just told the children, he was being funny here. Because everyone was sitting there or standing there thinking, really, Jesus? You've just scared the daylights out of us, and now you're talking about the weather? And we all know this. If the winds are going to blow from the west, it's going to bring moisture from the Mediterranean and give us rain. If it blows from the south, it's going to blow the scorching heat from the desert onto us. We know these things. Why are you telling us this? Because, whoop, let me back up. That light part is both diagnostic and prescriptive. He's diagnosing the situation by being funny with them. He says, you know these things. I know you know these things. And you think I'm ridiculous for saying these things. And then he says, you hypocrites. I hope I read this correctly. I worked at it because I didn't want to make this sound like 21st century. You hypocrites! That's not what Jesus would have said. Jesus would have said, you hypocrites. Because a hypocrite in his time was not a two-faced person. It wasn't someone who believed one thing and acted out a different way. It isn't someone who talked the talk but didn't walk the walk. That's our definition. Jesus' definition was a mistaken interpreter, especially someone who misinterpreted the law, the Torah. But by extension, it could be anyone that misinterpreted anything. And that's what Jesus is saying. You've misinterpreted things. You know about the weather, but you don't know about the kingdom. And it's right here before you, just like the weather. And that's where the gospel ends. Notice anything missing? There's no prescription. I said it's part diagnosis, part prescription, and there is no prescription. And this is where Jesus would have engaged his audience and they would have discussed these things. But our gospel ends here. This is where the gospel writer ended it. So let me help you with some prescriptions. Some ways that we can pay attention to God's kingdom right here with us now, just as it was when he spoke to these people about the weather. Here's a couple of things to think about. One is mindfulness. 
The other is love and beauty. Mindfulness today seems to be getting a lot of press. I read about it quite a bit in the paper and in magazines, about us being mindful in different ways that we can do it. It seems it's always in AARP magazine. Try to get into yoga, that type of thing. If you want a good example of mindfulness, I'm sure most all of you have been watching I hope. Ah, there I am. If you've been watching television at all in the Olympics, you've seen some mindfulness. Those athletes, I love watching them before the start of a race. And I guess the only thing I really have to say is Michael Phelps. Do you remember seeing that picture of Michael Phelps with his hood up? He looked like a 21st century monk. And that, that, horrible, that horrible sportsman from South Africa taunting him the whole time, and he is mindful. He's thinking about one thing and one thing only, and that was doing the butterfly. That's mindfulness. Oftentimes in mindfulness, we think about meditation, especially Eastern meditation, Zen Buddhism, where you sit cross-legged for hours, becoming mindful. Sometimes the master would give you a cone That's K-O-A-N, a a cone. And it's an absurd instruction, the most famous of which is, what is the sound of one hand clapping? And you think about that and become mindful. Or perhaps you concentrate on your breath, becoming mindful. That's Eastern. We here in the West, we, we Christians practice meditation too but not so much. You see, meditation goes hand in hand with prayer. We pray, but we don't always meditate. Prayer is when we talk to God. We tell God of His glory. We worship Him. We give Him thanks. We ask God for things. We ask God to bring his healing power to Aunt Tilly because she's not well. Hopefully most of us are past asking God for a bicycle. And then we close our prayer with Amen. So be it. And we get up from our knees or from our chair or we walk away. We have prayed. But that's where meditation comes in. Christian meditation. Meditation is listening for God's answer. Prayer is talking to God. Meditation is listening to God. And if you'll stay there in silence, He will talk to you. It may take a while, but if you give it the time and become mindful of that, He will talk to you. That's prescription number one much cheaper than the prescriptions you get at Walgreens. Here's a second one for you. Think about creation. I think about creation a lot. It's kind of become a thing with me lately. And I walk. I walk every morning. And as I'm walking, as my feet hit God's earth, I concentrate, I become mindful of my feet on His on his good earth. Now you may be in you know, $135 walking shoes and you may be walking on concrete but you're still walking on God's earth. And as you do that, think. Become mindful of God and his creation. Here's another one. Eating. I remember as a kid my dad telling me, slow down, son, you look like a shovel. 
putting that food into your mouth. And he was right. And I guess I haven't changed much because Annetta constantly reminds us that after each bite, we really need to put our fork down and chew. Some of that has to do with having been a teacher and getting 20 minutes to eat your lunch. So I try to set the fork down now and be aware that God has provided that food. Be aware, be mindful of it. You know that's why there's so many types of pasta, right? The spaghetti and vermicelli and salatini and linguine, and the list goes on and on and on, because each one of those tastes different. What the Italians call a mouth. They each have their own mouth. And they each have their own food that they go well with. You don't want a big meatball and use angel hair pasta. It doesn't mix. So we can be mindful of our eating. Be mindful of creation. Oops. Not yet. Love and beauty. Wow. Here we get to some of those abstract words. What is love? What is beauty? And we say, oh, I don't know. But you do know. You do know love and beauty. Because as the letter of John tells us, God is love. And God is beauty. And we are made in his image. So we know love and beauty automatically. We don't have to think about it. I remember years ago, Associate Justice John Paul Stevens of the Supreme Court wrote a decision during the pornography hearings. And he said, I can't define pornography, but I know it when I see it. And so it is with love and beauty. We may not be able to define it, but we know it when we see it. And that kingdom stands before us because we know love and beauty. And here's a way that it'll, it'll affect you physically. It will bring a tear to your eye or a smile to your face. I'm not talking about crying. I'm not talking about laughing hysterically. I'm talking about a tear and a smile. And there's all kinds of metaphors for those. So many of them, they, they become actually cheesy. You know, the newborn baby, kittens, a sunset in the mountains. All of those metaphors for love and beauty they become sort of worn out. And so I challenge you, come up with your own metaphor. Thinking about love and beauty. And all we have to do is keep our eyes open because it'll be right there before us. And when you feel that tear or that little wry smile in your face, observe it. We recently took a cruise. It was my first time on a cruise. We went with Annetta and our daughter and granddaughters. And I spent most of my time on the 12th deck, highest deck of the ship. And it's right above the bridge. So I had this great view of the ocean. With barely a turn of my head, I had 270 degrees of ocean that I could see. And I wanted to do that because my dad was in the Navy in World War II. And he was a radioman on board the USS California battleship. And his station was way up there on the very top of the ship, on the superstructure. That's where the two radio men were. And he told me these stories over again about nighttime on the sea and how beautiful the stars are. And daytime on the sea when you see nothing but water everywhere. Now I sail. And I'm used to being on the water. But when I sail, I always see land. I sail at Stockton. I see land everywhere. Out there I saw nothing but water. And standing on that bridge, I'll say it's a bridge and I sound more important. Standing there, I knew love and beauty. And I saw my metaphor. And my metaphor was the horizon. I learned from the captain that on a clear day that horizon is about 18 miles away. 
It's a long ways to see. And I looked at that horizon, and all of a sudden, Genesis 1-6 made total sense to me. After all these years, Genesis 1-6 is where God separates the water from the sky because this is what those ancient writers saw on that horizon. It all looks blue. It all looks the same. And they thought that water was up here as well as down here. And so God took and made a firmament. There's a word that we only use in Genesis 1. Took a firmament to hold the water up, up there in the sky. And every once in a while, he'd open up windows and it'd rain on us. And then he'd close the windows back up. And all of a sudden, that made sense to me. There's my metaphor for love and beauty. The beauty of creation, looking at that horizon. And knowing the love of God, of course, but also my Father. And the ocean of love and beauty is God. It's from a poem by Khalil Gibran. He was a Syrian Christian. A Marianist Christian, they're called. They have a special devotion to our Lord's mother. And the poem is called A Tear and a Smile. I encourage you to look it up on the web. It's a beautiful poem, and this is how it ends. And so on the ocean, I found my metaphor, and I encourage you to do the same. Jump into that ocean. Swim in that ocean. Don't be a hypocrite. Understand things wisely. And by all means, pay attention. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again, and he ascended to heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Rooted in Christ and rising to serve, let us pray for the church and the world and all in need. God near to us, increase your people's passion to share how Christ transforms lives. Raise up prophets in your church, Lord, to interpret the word and the world today. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creating God, the abundance of your creation fills us with awe and delight. Renew the scorched places that need rain, those recovering from disaster, and those needing balance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of power, administer justice. Pour your spirit of compassion and mercy into those who hold the lives of others in their hands. We pray for the healing in our country over Black Lives Matter and Blue Lives Matter. Heal the racial discord. Even as we celebrate Olympic cooperation, we continue to pray for our world gripped by economic inequity, terrorism, and war. We pray for all who are persecuted or imprisoned for their beliefs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Compassionate God, comfort all who long for relief from circumstances of sickness. Comfort all in need in body, mind, or spirit. Especially this day, be with Meredith Adams, Cindy Anderson, Lyle Bea, Bryce Bauer, Carolyn Callan, Dennis Chapel, Pam Cole, Dean Crane, Sandy Drake, Jeff Dykeman, Mark Henson, Dennis Hess, Janelle Joswick, Alan Kamens, Carolyn Lohmeyer, Annabelle Moore, Jan Snath, Sean Snellen, Lucy Stilwell, Lawrence Tillotson, Linnea Ugla, Joyce Ugla, and Kathy Zintner. Are there any others? We thank you, O oh God, for the great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us. We entrust to you those who have died. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Lord, these are alms. Let us pray. Mercy, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table. We may come to be help from all in need, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, our Maker, Redeemer, and Healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars, were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us against, again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink. And said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal, 
as grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This morning, we will commune via intinction. We do this once a month. As our Lord comes to you in the form of a wafer, please hold the wafer in your hand. And as the chalice comes by you, dip the wafer in the wine and commune that way. Intinction a very ancient way of celebrating our Lord's Supper. We come from the north and the south, the east and the west, to this table to commune with our Lord. All is ready. Come. The body of our Lord, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. O oh God, as a mother comforts her child, so you comfort your people, carrying us in your arms and satisfying us with this food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Send us now as your disciples, announcing peace and proclaiming that the reign of God has come near, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Do you have announcements? Announcements? Wes. And now, may the peace of God, the peace that surpasses all our understanding, guide our hearts and guide our minds, abide with us and stay with us now and always. In the name of the blessed, the glorious, and the eternal Trinity, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth,
gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, remember the poor.